The Elder Scrolls. Most people have played the tenth game in the series, known as Skyrim. However, there were nine games before it. And as such, there is a great deal of lore, or game story, that is not known by a majority of the players. So today, I'll be kicking off my Elder Scrolls lore series. Now before I get specific with Elder Scrolls lore in any one point in time, I'm going to explain the lore in general, so that people can better understand what Elder Scrolls lore is. And that brings us to our first episode, Introduction to the Elder Scrolls Lore, and the Meta Within. All future episodes in this series will follow a wildly different format than this. This is an explanation of Elder Scrolls lore, and the Elder Scrolls lore community itself. As such, it is filled with personal opinions and analyses. However, this step is necessary for those trying to understand the Elder Scrolls lore, exactly what it is, and how it differs from the lore in any other video game series. In order to get this started, I need to talk about the concept of canon, that is, what is and is not legitimately part of the lore. And unlike Dark Souls or Dragon Age, Elder Scrolls lore is not cut and dry like that. There is a lot of information, a lot of mistruths, a lot of conflicting information. Now, much of this is by design. As real-life religions contradict one another, so too will many of the in-game lore books contradict one another. And more often than not, anything an NPC says in-game is probably, on the greater level, wrong. With the exception of Vivek, the Daedra, Martin Septim, basically the greater sages of the Elder Scrolls, most mortals are just flat out wrong with what they say. And this is all a reflection of real life. But for a casual observer of the lore, this also makes it DAMN CONFUSING! Because it is very easy for people who've only played Skyrim, or only played Oblivion, or only played Morrowind, to be quite frankly misled by the information that is presented to them because they don't have the greater picture in front of them. They are only seeing things from the limited perspective presented to them by the game they were playing. This limited perspective will result in things such as Shadycast's Talos episode, where there's seemingly a debate as to whether or not Talos is a divine, when his status as a divine was absolutely affirmed within the lore. Now don't take this as me bashing Shadycast, I really enjoy their videos. That said, a good chunk of the community has taken to calling them a baby's first introduction to Elder Scrolls lore. And while I don't agree with that label, I understand where it's coming from. Because there are quite a few people in the community who are known as lore masters. They are people who have dedicated an extensive amount of time to studying the lore in depth. They are not content creators. They are not entertainers such as myself. Their free time is usually spent on one of three websites. Talking about the lore on message boards, answering questions, researching and engaging in intellectual debates regarding the source material. And I've been called a lore master by a few people, but I guarantee you that is wholly inaccurate. But if you'd like to engage with these people in their home environment, I recommend checking out the TES Lore Reddit. That is reddit.com forward slash r forward slash T-E-S-L-O-R-E. The Imperial Library, that's www.imperial-library.info And finally, the Bethesda Official Lore Forums at forums.bethsoft.com forward slash forum forward slash 16 dash elder dash scrolls dash lore Keeping in mind that you'll find more personal headcanon aka conjecture and thought experiments in the TES lore subreddit than you will actual factual lore. And on the Imperial Library, and then on the Bethesda official lore forums, you'll tend to find a little more solid statements. Through all this, however, regardless of what someone tells you on any of these websites, the only 100% canon, 100% legitimate lore source 
are the Elder Scrolls games themselves, and the two licensed novels which in my personal opinion aren't very good. But if you feel compelled to read those novels, they are The Infernal City and Lord of Souls by Gregory Keyes. By now quite a few of you have heard of out of game lore sources, but don't understand exactly where these are coming from. They are not the two aforementioned novels. You see, on the Elder Scrolls official forums and on the Imperial Library website, there have been contributors, specifically three former Bethesda employees and one, at the time of speaking this, current Bethesda employee. Anything these people write is considered by the Elder Scrolls lore community to be canon. Even though... As I just mentioned, the only 100% legitimate canon source are the games themselves. The front and center man amongst these former Bethesda employees is a man named Michael Kirkbride. Michael Kirkbride has continued to write Elder Scrolls lore after leaving Bethesda at the completion of the Morrowind Project. These usually take the form of forum or reddit posts. Sometimes they're objective, sometimes they are written as in-character. But in most cases, the greater Elder Scrolls lore community takes his works as canon. In any other community, this would be considered utter nonsense. And as a former employee no longer working for the company, his work could easily be discredited anywhere else. But, on a seemingly contract basis, he actually did the Knights of the Nine questline for Oblivion. And several snippets of his out-of-game lore have been taken and referenced directly in Skyrim. People are quoting a current Bethesda employee saying that Michael Kirkbride's influences are still strong in the Elder Scrolls series and relevant. And a lot of the deeper, more philosophical and metaphysical answers within the Elder Scrolls lore do come from Michael Kirkbride. There is currently a rift within the lore community. There are people who want to outright reject everything he has written that has not made its way into the game. As rightfully they can, because as I mentioned, the only lore that is 100% canon is that which entered the game. However, considering how spot-on he was about other aspects of the lore, it's very difficult to disregard everything he says. And that's where the other side of the rift comes in. There is a group that satirical people refer to as the Cult of Kirkbride. People who want to say that absolutely everything he has written belongs in the canon. Which is a valid opinion, although in my opinion, that opinion is absolutely absurd. And this is where I'm going to get into the subjective nature of my Elder Scrolls lore series. Since the very beginning when I started doing modded character builds and I started explaining the lore, the history behind the particular factions that that character was involved in, I've been operating off what many members of the lore community operate off of, but refuse to acknowledge what they operate off of, and that is a personal headcanon. What this means is they are presenting their personal opinions, their personal conjecture, and conclusions as fact. Now, I tried to do a divide between the history sections and the character backstory, realizing that the character backstory was 100% fan fiction, whereas the history was 80-90% to 90 actual lore. So for all future entries in this series, it is very important that you understand that I will be operating off of my own personal headcanon. I will try my best to make sure that these presentations are accurate, however, I will also temper them with my own opinions, and my own slant on things. So it's very likely that my conclusions will come into direct conflict with many a lore master and their very obscure facts that I was not able to find. Now if you believe that anything I say in these presentations is outright wrong, go ahead and post that in the comments section. I want to see your personal opinions on this. Now if I believe that it's just a matter of selective headcanon, I will probably do nothing. However, if it's simply information I was lacking, 
that I believe is from a legitimate in-game lore source, then I will probably post a second version of whatever particular presentation I was going on about. Now that these presentations are no longer tied directly to a character build, I have no problems with revising the content. Things that are not on the table for revision include, but are not limited to, my personal pronunciation of things like Kim, which I will always call Chim, as well as any pieces of out of game or Elder Scrolls online lore that I've used or omitted from my presentation. That's right, I will be selectively picking and choosing which pieces of out of game or Elder Scrolls online lore to use and which pieces to throw away. Mentioning of these items that are not on the table will most likely result in a satirical or mocking reply. Now as for Elder Scrolls lore satire, this part is fairly important. Quite a few of you may be wondering where I get these pictures of, for example, Vivek going, It's Chim, I ain't gotta explain shit and other funny but rather awful examples of the bastardization of Elder Scrolls lore. Most of it dates back to a now dead subreddit known as Shitty TES Lore. Now the subreddit still exists and posts are made to it every few days. However, the lore satire community has actually shifted over to a new subreddit known as reddit.com forward slash r forward slash true STL, which jokingly referred to as sexually transmitted lore, but in reality is simply shitty The Elder Scrolls lore. The side panel description says, Worry not, True STL is a place that encourages discussion on any and all facets of Chim, Dragon Breaks, The Hist, greater bodies of Elder Scrolls fiction without judgment or prejudice. But regardless of what that says, you'll find a lot of bullshit flying around. And that's the whole point of the community. It's to satirize the very serious, almost circle jerk community at the main TES lore. And if you personally like memes, and you like Elder Scrolls lore, then you will absolutely adore this subreddit. Now people obviously want to know why I would even bother mentioning true STL when I'm talking about the lore. Well, I believe in satire and I believe in jokes, and I make them constantly throughout my presentations. And you really can't get a true sense for the greater Elder Scrolls community without understanding the satire side of it as well. Now, far less accurate as a lore source, there are two wikis that are definitely worth checking out if you're into the Elder Scrolls. That is elderscrolls.wikia.com and uesp.net. These two wikis have quite a bit of information from both in-game and out-of-game sources edited in by countless individuals. While they are typically accurate for in-game resources and quest information, finding exact lore on them can be tricky as they lack the oversight that Wikipedia and other wikis have. And as a result, just like with the TES lore Reddit, the Imperial Library, and the Bethesda lore forums, anything out of game may not actually be canon. And because of the ever-changing nature of these wikis, I'm not able to cite one exact source of inaccuracy. Rather, it's important to not take these as absolute sources and instead cross-reference the hell out of them if you find a piece of information there. However, if you ever wondered anything really quick while in-game, it's very easy to hop on these websites and find more information out about what you're currently doing. The most interesting information on these wikis is not actually in the wiki pages themselves, but rather hitting the talk button and reading the discussion pages regarding those wiki pages is where you'll find the most information possible. This is where conjecture and opinion meet and all kinds of creativity appears. Obviously, since most of this is not concrete fact, it doesn't find its way into the main wiki pages. As rightfully, it should not. The last piece of information I'll be going over in this, the meta episode of the Lorecast, is CODA. That is C-Zero-D-A. Very often in my videos, when I talk about something absolutely ridiculous within Elder Scrolls lore, I will say 
Coda makes it canon. Now, for those of you who don't know what a coda is, it's more or less a cap or an end to a performance. Usually, a coda will change in tone, so if you had a very somber performance, the coda would be upbeat, or vice versa. It basically changes things up as a way to conclude the performance. For a long time now, Michael Kirkbride has been accused of not acknowledging that Morrowind is over. Although he has written content for pretty much all the Elder Scrolls lore, most of it always comes back to Morrowind, always comes back to the Dark Elves, always comes back to that whole level of metaphysics and Morrowind's living gods. And so arguments began to spring up as to what is and is not canon amongst all the different materials that were being produced. Written by Michael Kirkbride, the coda is simply put the end to all the metaphysics of Morrowind, that whole story arc. And it basically takes us through what can only be described as Elder Scrolls fan fiction. As we see things such as Nern's destruction in the Fifth Era, the return of the Numidium, the total erasure of the High Elf race, the Nevin Nereen returning to battle Numidium piloting the Akulakan, and the fact that Vivek is still there through the whole thing. Now some of you may be tempted to say, well that is freaking awesome. Unfortunately, the ridiculousness of it is beyond the pale. Everyone, remember your pop-up blockers. We've stopped Thalmor Super Scientist, His Psychopaths, Talos Masterminds, and beat up giant planet-breathing demons. People, don't tell me we can't find a way to beat up television. These are a few examples of what is contained in CODA. It's a few brilliant ideas floating in a sea of crap. And the non-ridiculous stuff would actually be pretty good for a what-if novel. And that is more or less what CODA was set out to be. CODA is self-described as a living, collaborative, open-source universe. The idea is that all interpretations of the lore are valid under the CODA. And this was Michael Kirkbride's greater statement, was to abolish the concept of the canon entirely. To make Elder Scrolls lore as a whole open source. You see, where he's coming from, beta testers of Daggerfall actually wrote the lore books, which a lot of our Elder Scrolls lore is based on now. Yes, other lore books were written by Michael Kirkbride, other lore books were written by other members of Bethesda. However... The fact that the Elder Scrolls Foundations are in the community. He's issued the statement that there is no canon, only levels of good ideas. And so there is a movement of people who absolutely adore the Coda. They believe that now their personal canons are legitimate. And while these ideals he has makes sense from a fundamental standpoint, it is ignoring several major flaws. First and foremost, that not all ideas are good ideas. There are many more bad writers than there are good writers. And without a filter, a gatekeeper, a judge, someone who says, this is worthy, this is not worthy, we end up with shit. A lot of people proudly shouting, this is my canon, look at it. As if somehow Michael Kirkbride has single-handedly legitimized all their fanfiction. To which I'm simply going to say, no. As a writer, I can create any world I want. I can create any characters I want. If I choose to write something in Elder Scrolls, I don't need Michael Kirkbride's permission, nor did I need it prior to his writing the coda. I am not saying that fanfiction isn't valid. I've seen fan fiction that is far superior than the source material in many, many occasions. However, if Coda were a video game in the Elder Scrolls series, I would not buy it. But that's supposed to be the beauty of the Coda, is that it's not a game in the Elder Scrolls series, it is an open source, freeform universe. Everyone gets to have their own Coda. To which I reiterate, you have fanfiction, you had fanfiction before, 
Michael Kirkbride did not legitimize your fan fiction. Your fan fiction is as your fan fiction always was. The character builds I do for Skyrim are fan fiction, as your coda is fan fiction, and they will only ever exist in your world or those you share it with who accept it. In short, to sum everything up, Michael Kirkbride has only devalued his brand. And yes, believe it or not, he has a brand. He was, and last reported, still is a valuable yet independent consultant with Bethesda on Elder Scrolls lore. Reportedly, the New World Mary Dominion and the White Gold Concordat were both his ideas. But rather than talk about Coda anymore, I'm going to suggest that you have a look at it for yourself. Go to c0da.es. That is a website. Then click on Read Coda. So between the legitimate in-game sources for lore and the questionable yet very informative out-of-game lore sources, this primer should have you understanding the meta of Elder Scrolls lore and how the community works, as opposed to a normal game's lore where everything is found in the actual game. If you are so inclined, please like and share this episode with your friends. Every little bit helps, and please do leave a comment. Now that this primer is over, episode 2 will see a real start to the series with the creation of the Elder Scrolls universe, the forming of Mundus and the planet Nern, as well as Tamriel itself. Until then, I'll see y'all next time.